Westminster Confession. We're now in chapter 5, which is about the topic of God's providence, which is God's control and governance of all of history and of his whole creation, the whole universe and all things both seen and unseen. And uh, just to give a summary of what we've covered so far in this study on the Westminster Confession. The Confession begins in chapter 1 by talking about the doctrine of Scripture, which is how we know God. So we need to understand the Scriptures first, but then chapter 2 gives us the doctrine of God. Then chapter 3 is about God's eternal decrees, the decrees about all that God planned to do in history that He made before the creation of the world. And then chapters 4 and 5 are about how God executes his decrees. So that is through creation. God made the world and now God's providence where he governs all things that happen in his world to happen in accord with his eternal decree, his eternal purposes that he made from before the foundations of the earth. And so we're now in paragraph one, which is the confessions, a summary of God's providence. This is what it says. God, the great creator, so that's the first part of God executing his decrees, that he first created the world. God, the great creator of all things, doth uphold, direct, dispose, and govern all creatures, actions, and things from the greatest even to the least. This means that God's attention, God's knowledge, God's action, God's care, God's wisdom are directed towards uh, black holes on the other side of the universe, all the way down uh, to the smallest atom that make up our bodies, the very fibers of our being. You know, uh, Jesus' uh, famous way of talking about God's providence is that he asks, are not even uh, two sparrows sold for a penny? And yet not one of them falls to the ground apart from my Father. Our Father's care, even over the suffering of the smallest creature, is is comprehensive in His creation. And so that's from from the greatest even to the least of His creatures and all their actions. And And it goes on to say, by his most wise and holy providence, according to his infallible knowledge. Now, this is an amazing thing, that it's not only that God is governing everything that happens, and even the details of our lives, our day-to-day lives, the things that are brought in, the people that are brought in, the events that are brought into our lives, but they are all governed according to his holiness and his wisdom. They were wisely placed there. So whatever happens in history, right now, our world is facing a pandemic. Ultimately, even this pandemic has been ordered by God's wise providence. And so we trust him. Now, we always can't see what he is doing. We don't always have knowledge of what he is doing. And so when we say, why would God order history the way he has? Well, the confession gives us somewhat of an answer to that. And it says, in the free an immutable counsel of his own will. So that means that nothing catches God by surprise. He orders all things according to his purposes. He is not changing in his purposes to the praise of the glory of his wisdom, power, justice, goodness, and mercy. You know, my kids know this when we ever, we have theological discussions around our table and they ask me a question about God that I can't answer. And they say, why does God do this? My answer always to them is for his own glory. Ultimately, that is why God is doing whatever he does. In in large events like a pandemic or even the details and the smallest suffering of each of our individual lives, his purposes are his glory. And that's a question for us that if God has ordered our lives in such a way to bring him the most glory, Will we receive that providence from him? Will we trust him in that providence? And so uh, this is a major part of the teaching of of the confession, teaching us to see all of creation and all of our lives governed by God's wise 
purposes and ordered by him. And in this chapter, we'll, it will reiterate some of what we've already learned from uh, chapter three on God's eternal decrees. But this is some of the confession's most profound teaching about the supreme sovereignty of God in his providence. And now here's a question for your discussion. What is an area of your life that would be transformed if you trusted it to God's providence?